Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on scatter graphs. So there's going to be two videos on this topic. In the first video we'll look at some key skills and in the second video we'll look at some example questions. Uh, but the first key skill that we'll look at is correlation. Uh, so what do we mean by correlation? Well a correlation is essentially a way of determining whether or not there's a link or a relationship between two variables. Uh, so there's two types of correlation that we'll see. Uh, so for instance if we have two variables, so x and y, uh, well if x increases and y also increases and then we can say that there's a positive correlation uh, and then similarly if x increases as y decreases uh, then we can say that there's a negative correlation. Now we can also describe the strength of a correlation and the way we do that uh, is we assess how well grouped the data is so how tightly packed are our data points. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, the data points in this strip are very very close together. Uh, so we can say that this is a strong correlation. So in, uh, in summary, this would be a strong positive correlation. Uh, and then again, if we look at the negative correlation here, we can see that these data points are all very well grouped as well. So this would be a strong negative correlation. So the second key skill that you need to be familiar with is drawing a line of best fit. Uh, now a line of best fit is a line that we use to represent the correlation uh, of the data. Uh, so here we've got an unlabeled scatter graph. Uh, let's just give these uh, variables a name. So let's say this is time spent revising and then this would be the mark in a maths exam for instance. Now if we want to draw a line of best fit for this data, there's uh, there's a few things we have to consider. Uh, first of all, it's a po positive correlation, so the line will have a positive gradient, uh, so it will be going upwards and to the right. Uh, the second thing we have to consider is that there needs to be an equal number of points on each side of the line. Uh, so let's count the points. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data points, which means we need to have four data points on each side of the line. Uh, and then the third thing that we need to consider is that uh, the spacing should be equal uh, and that is the spacing between the line and each of the data points or is at least as equal as it is possible to make it. So let's have a go at drawing the line then. So I'm going to start here and then uh, when you draw a straight line make sure to use a ruler. Uh, here I've, I've made my best attempt to draw a straight line but as you can see there are four points uh, on the bottom of the line and four points above the line. Now a line of best fit is a really useful tool. Uh, so these axes don't have any labels but let's just put some in. Uh, so let's say this time spent revising is measured in hours and our points are 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Uh, so that's hours. And then let's say the mark is out of 100. Uh, so that'd be 80, that'd be 60, that'd be 40, that'd be 20 and so on. Now we could use our line of best fit to predict uh, the mark of someone who spent a certain amount of time revising and vice versa. So let's say someone uh, spent five hours revising or well, we can draw a line from five hours up to our line of best fit and then draw across uh, to the y-axis to work out the mark that they might have got. So here you can see that the mark is about 53 to 54. Uh, so we could say that this person achieved a mark of approximately 54. Now you don't have to be especially precise in this and um, there's always a little bit of leniency depending on how you draw your uh, line of best fit uh, but something in the range 50 to 60 would usually be an acceptable answer. So a final point to note then is that the estimation we've just carried out is within the range of the data points that are given to us. So this is known as an interpolation. Uh, whereas if we carried out the estimation outside of the range of the given data, so for instance if we'd gone to nine hours revising and tried to estimate from here, uh, this would be outside of the range of the given data. So it's known as an extrapolation. Now an interpolation is generally quite reliable uh, because it's inside the data uh, or the range of data that's given and an extrapolation is generally less reliable uh, because you can't predict if or when a correlation might suddenly change. So if you want to practice some scatter graphs exam style questions, then why not have a go with our online exam? It's available through our revision platform. If you take the test, you'll find loads of different questions to have a go at and you receive instant feedback on all of them. So this is really useful if you find, want to find out where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are and how you can improve quickly.
So if you're interested, then click the link below, it will take you straight there.